The S&P is getting rejected at the bear market downtrend for a fourth time. The markets have seen this all before and have set themselves up for a sweet trade to the downside. Today's video, we're going to update that on the S&P. Where are the safe zones for this market to fall to in a potential correction of the bear market rally? What can we do to prepare for this next move? And where do we see Bitcoin moving forward to from this point? Thanks again for joining me on the channel. I hope you're feeling happy and healthy. Quick notice that we have a video sponsor for today. It's Social Good App. I'll mention more about that later in the video. Let's dive into the details right now. After you hit that subscribe and like button down below, or I'll remind you again at the end of the video if you want to see what the value is here on the channel. So yesterday's video, we have been covering the rejection points here from the bear market downtrend and what we expect to come over the next quarter. So that's quarter one of 2023. There is always going to be ups and downs within the short term. And it was pretty clear to see yesterday as the market double topped uh, just a couple of days ago now, and it started to fall. And then of course, overnight, we got that full on rejection and a breaking of the 3,900 point level. So as we looked at in yesterday's video, this was a pretty straightforward short sell signal it's not trying to tell people to go and do it, but essentially this is a clear technical analysis, double top on the daily chart with targets in mind down at these levels around 3,800 to 3,830. So that's basically like a safe level that you could expect a double top to play out to and then hopefully recover from that point and test those higher levels. Now to the further downside, I'd say this is also safe down here, but it's going to be a longer time to recover back to those levels. If we fall to these levels, it's still strong and we uh, attempt to recover to break that bear market downtrend. However, if we break that level there, which is basically the 38, meaning it is our 50% level through this entire run, it's the projected price target for that double top move and we break through that point then we still have the possibility of grinding out again, but it's going to take a lot longer because we've broken major support. It's essentially like breaking down the layers of support. You have some support at these levels and you have more support at the, at the levels further down. And so if you break the bigger support and then the further larger support, it's just going to take more time to rebuild that support to then bounce and push higher again. Essentially, it's telling us how long this move could take. So once we see where this bottom comes in, we'll get a better idea of a quick recovery or a longer recovery. This current move hasn't changed anything in the macro. What would change the macro picture is getting to these lower levels. So anything under the 3,600 point level and potentially breaking down that 3,500 point low. So while we continue to remain in this region here and getting rejected from the bear market downtrend after the interest rate news, it's still within our zone here. This potential trading range that the market has set in place since around May of 2022. So coming on seven months for this particular range. However, we know from experience now that this range has been extreme with emotions of the potential of further collapse and war and property prices collapsing. However, if we just look back seven months, the price is relatively the same as it has been that entire period and essentially has just gone on a wild ride of ups and downs, but remains at basically the same price. This is how the news always fools the majority of people because they're just looking at the headlines and the days down or today was an update. They don't take a overall picture view of what's going on and they could look back seven months and say, the price is the same. The news never does that. It will never tell you that it's basically been the same thing. And it's investors just getting shaken out time in and time out uh, again and again and again. So along with the rejection of the bear market downtrend for the S&P, the major markets, we're getting a slight rally here on the US dollar. We've been covering this. We know that there's essentially going to be a time where the market has to go on a bear market rally, but we're basically in a bear market now for the US dollar back from that September peak, which we talked about on the channel, specifically on the day of the 26th and 27th of September. We had a tiny higher high there on the 28th, and then the rest is history from that point. And so it's coming up on about nine to 10 weeks from uh, that particular top, actually 11 weeks here, we've got 79 days from the top to the low. And we're anticipating a two to three week 
uh, turnaround, basically a bit of a rally within the bear market for the US dollar. Eventually, this has to come. We know from experience that these moves from tops take somewhere between 10 and about 12 weeks before you get a little bit of a rally within the downtrend. So that's what we're anticipating. Probably now, if this is the bottom, then we would look forward around two to three weeks to see where this rally comes in and a continuation of the downtrend from that point. Now, if you guys want to stay up to date with the macroeconomics of the markets, including the stock market, real estate, cryptocurrencies, go and check out the link in the top of the video description right here. This is for our fortnightly newsletter, basically a major report that we go through in more detail around Bitcoin and the real estate market, stuff that we don't have time for here on YouTube. So if that's of interest to you, go and check it out. Link is going to be in the top of the video description or my pinned comment, my official pinned comment, not the scammers out there. So where does that leave Bitcoin? Well, we got rejected yesterday and we've fallen underneath the June low, the $17,600 level. Remember here, the multi-day closes that we needed above that June low. Well, we had one we basically had it yesterday. However, it was a very weak close. You can see the market ran up to 18.4 and then got rejected. And so we we're anticipating further downside, especially when we start to layer in the S&P data and of course the US dollar as well. And we got that. We got that drop to the downside. And so these steps, uh, pieces of the puzzle that I put in here many weeks ago, looking at particular price ranges that the market needed to consolidate above in order to get to that next step. Just pushing past that price and holding for a few hours or maybe a day or two isn't enough. It needs to consolidate like we've seen in the past here. As the market climbed above 16,900, it consolidated above this level and then tried to push to new highs. It wasn't able to do it this time and we've started to fall down again. Now, what we're getting at the moment in terms of the news and what's going on out there in the space is big fear and FUD around Binance. If you're unfamiliar with what's going on over there at the moment, you've got a lot of FUD surrounding Binance and them being able to pay back any sort of investors should they need to, potentially in the case here of FTX. Binance received $2.1 billion from FTX to basically get out of their position there with FTX before they collapsed. And if this thing continues on through the courts, maybe they'll need to pay that back. Maybe they'll have a clawback section where Binance might have to repay that. And so on CNBC, CZ has been asked whether they have the $2.1 billion to be able to pay back. And he's basically deferred it or, or flicked it on to his lawyers, which is fair enough. I don't think he needs to talk about that. However, it's caused a lot of FUD out there. And so what happens at these bear market lows is we start to get a push to try to take every last piece of the puzzle out of the collapse. In this case, now they're targeting Binance. But like I've talked about before, we look back a month or two, they were targeting crypto.com. Nothing came of that. They were targeting Qcoin. Nothing has come of that. They were targeting Bybit and BitGet and the other exchanges and nothing has come of that. But what they have done is create Merkle Tree so that they could see what is on those exchanges. And each of these exchanges are basically getting their Merkle Tree done to show what reserves they have. Now, I'm not telling you to leave any cryptocurrencies on those exchanges. Uh, if you've got anything on there, take off what you feel is comfortable, but leave what you need to perform your business. You are trying to trade or if you are trying to trade, you're going to need some crypto on there. So it's never a, a factor to leave crypto on there. But essentially with the news, what is happening right now is to try to f create the next leg down. They're trying to create the next fear mongering campaign to push these prices down. I will show you Binance chart in just a second because there's a huge cycle pattern over there. Something I've shared with our members um, recently, but I'll show you that in just a sec. Essentially for Bitcoin right now, to the downside, anything above 16.9 or at least this yellow line right here around 16.7, another area that we've covered before, this is going to be some good holding ground. So basically a, a consolidation area for uh, Bitcoin so that it can try and push to 17 or 18k again. If it starts to break down from this level, then obviously that puts us back in the zone of 15.5 to 16.5 a lot weaker again, and that would then increase the chances of a test to the downside. But while it remains up here, even though we get these down days of people fearful and the cries of $10,000 Bitcoin come out again, anything above this level here is still relatively safe. 
for a consolidation and another test to the higher prices. Before we get to that macro cycle on Binance, a quick word from our video sponsor. I should let you know this is not a buy recommendation, so keep your hats on, boys. Today's video sponsor is Social Good. It's a shop to earn app where you can earn cryptocurrency when you shop within the app. There's 100% crypto back rewards at over 100 different sites like Adidas, Nike, New Balance, Chemist Warehouse, Booking.com. On their website, they state they've given away over $50 million to 2 million users and their sign up bonus is extended for a limited time all the way through to January 2023. If you are interested in checking out the Social Good app, there is a link in the video description to get started. And as a major disclaimer, this is not an endorsement to purchase any tokens whatsoever. That is financial advice and we cannot give you financial advice. So check out the links in the video description and do your own research. Let's get back to the video. Now look at that major macro cycle on Binance, which could spell the end to Binance for the next two years. Now this is a Binance versus Bitcoin chart on a monthly chart. So it's the longest term timeframes that we are going to use for this particular analysis. It goes all the way back to the inception here, July, 2017. And you can see a clear 21 to 22 month timeframes for this cycle up and then down and up again. And we've basically just hit on the end of that cycle. And this happened before any of this Binance news was coming out. The FTX stuff, the Binance stuff, this happened before it. So the chart shows again how clear this trend could be. Now, we've just started our first major month down to put in a potential top here on Binance versus Bitcoin. And this could last two years from that point. So just before we get to where that could end for Binance, before it could turn around again and gain some strength against uh, Bitcoin, let's just take a look at this in a little more detail. 21 months up to the peak in April of 2019. We know that Bitcoin found a peak in around June of 2019 from that point as well. So this was rallying up at, um, while Bitcoin was also going up after that macro low after that cycle low it then fell for 21 months against btc value down to january of 2021 and has since been up into the the latest high of november 2022 so no one can argue that this is not a clear uh, bull and bear trend over 21 to 22 months should this repeat we have 22 months or 21 months would take us out to around August of 2024. And if we wanted to go out for that 22 months, then it's going to be around September of 2024. So sometime around August or September of 2024, this chart may find a bottom. This is looking at Binance versus the Bitcoin value. So it doesn't mean that Binance can't go up in USD value, but it may continue to lose value against Bitcoin for this entire period. This is a really interesting look at the macro view of an altcoin against its Bitcoin value. There are other areas that we would want to look at for potential turns. Like you can see in the previous cycles, it did fall and then go on a reasonable rally before a final low. And this happens time and time again, a rise up and a fall and a rise and a fall before you get a final top. And so we're going to look out for that throughout this two year period until 2024, maybe for a potential buy-in for Binance because it has been holding up relatively well against its Bitcoin value, but I think it's going on a major turn at this point. That's it for today's video. Thanks again to today's video sponsor and you guys as well with your comments from previous videos. Like and subscribe. Check out the videos popping up here on your left-hand side and I'll see you back here at the next video. Until then, peace out.